day in a best out of five with sync up one game to nothing. So one of these two teams is getting that rematch. Which will it be is the question. Uh, in as, as usual, interesting start to what is game number three here now. You got the initial bans and a couple of change-ups here. You got Parasite and Swift Blade. Okay, nothing too crazy there, but Flux and then Oogie Ban. Flux by Reason, Oogie Ban by Tree. So they were able to win last game, but it's also a point of, you know what, we just don't want to deal with it still. We're just going to take it out here. So they make sure to uh, ban it out here. But, yeah, the Flux Ban by Reason. Talk about some respect there, man. Man, that hero... Like, Cracky absolutely dominates with it, though, to be fair. It's not one of his favorite heroes, and he definitely showed it in game two, so why not just ban it out, I guess? And at the same time, that obviously did leave Kefulifan to be open for Tree, and Tree would gladly pick it up. That's, yeah. that one, that's the one time where we Clay is not first picked against for Tree. Wow, that's true. Yeah, well, if it's Cthulhu fine, it's like, all right, fine. Okay, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe we have to. We'll <laughs> settle with Cthulhu fine. Fine, whatever. Yeah, no, I, I think they, they're just fine with that. They still get the Glacius, so of course uh, that makes it even more fine. Uh, and then Kinesis on top of that, so interesting start there. Look at Reason Gaming. They got uh, Chipper, which they ran the first game in the victory, but they also get Behemoth, which being the hands of Nier, I'm sure, and then Puppet Master is going to be Emma Boy's hero, it looks like, so. Their puppet master out of the way. Get their carry out of the way, even. Oh, most likely, I mean, it could be a support puppet master. I'm not going to completely. You know, actually, the I'm Reason not saying that they are, but TPS priceless. I want to say yeah. he ran a support puppet yeah, master, does. or he runs yeah, he it. Does. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if it's one team that runs support puppet master, I'm pretty sure it's Reason. So yeah. So again, I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but it's just kind of interesting how that coincidence. Uh, I just thought about that even so. But, uh, but yeah, more than likely going to be the carry options, and on to the second tier of fans we go. Um, it's uh, Cthulhu Font, again, Tree, not a team that runs jungle, so it's safe to say that will more than likely be a uh, suicide Cthulhu Font here. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but they got um, Kinesis, yeah. Exactly. That's what I was, that's to me, that is a little bit of a question mark, like, hmm, moment, huh. but... Uh, I mean, I guess they could run a secondary support Kinesis. I've seen it been done before, and I think it was Rexars that ran a, a support Kinesis and it absolutely dominated. I think uh, Cormor or Serenia played it and just crushed with it. So, I mean, the hero can easily uh, be played as a support uh, as well as a suicide, but I guess we'll have to see. Uh, I'm not... I'm honest, I, I, I couldn't tell you whether this is going to be a suicide Kefilifin or a suicide Kinesis or jungle Kefilifin or... Yeah, man, uh, it's all up in the air at the moment. I couldn't, I couldn't say. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to wait and see, and I'm sure even Reason Gaming having their uh, curious questions as well in the end. So we'll see what that does ultimately end up being here. Uh, Tree overall 9-2 and two against Reason Gaming, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, it's kind of interesting because Reason against Nullstone Gaming, on the other hand, is something like that same record, if not even a little better. So, you know, certain teams just happen to be really good against others. <laughs> That's what that comes down to. Of course, again, Reason Gaming, one of these teams, though, they have changed a little bit as far as the roster goes and everything over time, so... Uh, definitely take that how you will, but Rally Band and then Prisoner on top of what was Cracking, Clanks, Pharaoh, and Bubbles. So, a lot of mobile heroes being banned here as well as uh, some solid initiators too, so, well, and then there's, and then there's Clanks. I guess, I don't know, he fits as far as a mobile hero goes, so. But, uh, yeah, Imba Boy taking away that option from Balthazar, again, we know that he loves to play that, so. I want to see a Blacksmith and a Flint Beast would here. Tree have been running a lot of Flint Beast for that. I, fast, again, that's, that's why I've heard about sure. that, so I want to see it now. Mm, I don't on, think we'll see it this three. game, though. It's against the Puppet Master, and like, Puppet Master, if you can pick up Assassin's Stroud, can get in the back lines of, you know, get into the back lines of Tree, and if you can get a hold of Flint Beast, would, Puppet Master would instantly destroy him. So, sure. yep, gonna go for something else in terms of Flint Beast with the Gemini. <sighs> Alright, I guess. We'll go with Gemini instead, says uh, says Fusen here. All right, no, but uh, again, understandable. Being a game three here again, a lot of it's on the line. And good chunk of uh, increased price pull. As I actually don't have that set up here. Well, give me one second. Uh, switched some things around recently, so here's the price pull. There we go. The price yeah. pull breakdown. It's uh, once again, you know, a good amount here. Twenty-seven thousand dollar prize pull for Cycle Six here for the Diamond Division. Good chunk of change. Coming out, and uh, for this match alone, I mean, you win this match, you're guaranteeing yourself just about basically two thousand dollars more as a team, if not what could ultimately be up to forty, like forty-two hundred dollars more. So it's good money, good money for uh, two weekends worth of playing some Heroes of New Earth here. 
the Luna fourth pick coming out for Reason Gaming, and they're they're the team that actually ran the carry Luna, weren't they? Yeah, it was Iba Boy uh, picks up. Yeah. And uh, obviously, Sync picked up in the last series as well. But, ooh, Plague Rider. So, this is going to be a uh, an aggressive dual lane with Plague Rider as sort of like a secondary support kind of thing. Um, something that Tree likes to flirt with sometimes, these aggressive dual lanes with Plague Rider, sort of to keep the lane control back. Um, and I believe it's going to be Kinesis mid and Kafilifin Plague Rider. Um, top, I believe. Although, I, yeah, that's I the, the double deny. That That is brutal, man. <laughs> Although it, it might just be a, a, a normal suicide plague, actually. Mm, yeah, yeah, it would be actually. Like suicide plague, you got something like, a, say, a Gemini. Uh, I don't know. Is that, is that, do you babysit a Cthulhu yeah. farm with, like, a Kinesis or Glacius? Eh? That's... Like, I, mean, I was thinking, like, if they do a uh, Plague Rider plus Cthulhu from top and, like, Kinesis mid and Gemini and Glacius, like, 2 1 2 kind of thing. Yeah. No, that would uh, make but sense. But... We, we, won't, we won't see it, though, because. Um, uh, Crackies and Root is on Kinesis, and Root doesn't play mid. So, well, hey, I guess it could happen. It could happen, yeah. I mean, it, to be fair, gonna... they haven't read it up yet either. Hey, it's, that's true. If he's gonna, so... if he's gonna, but if it is gonna happen, Boxy will be on Kinesis, and uh, Root will be on Plague. Yeah, that's for certain. But yeah, again, we we see, we see teams do this all the time where they don't that's ready true, up until yeah, yeah, the other yeah, yeah, team yeah. finishes their fun. Because if you do that, then you know they have that information. But just that, the, normally, the last time I saw Tree run Plague right, it was uh, like an aggressive dual lane. Um, like Plague as sort of a secondary support. Mm -hmm. So, I guess we'll have to see. For reason, though, their last pick will most likely be an offlaner, Chipper mid, and then Behemoth Aluna. Polymaster most likely in the short lane. Offlane is still on the board. Obviously, Pharaoh is still a possibility. Man, Lodestone, like, I, I said it before, but I really rate Lodestone. But, oh, man, Magmus fifth pick, what the hell? Wait, Magmus was still there. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. okay. I assumed he was banned because he was in the first pick, but okay. Huh. Yeah, he's not a hero that makes it that far at all, so... Oh, okay, yeah, look, sorry, Tree has swapped Plague Rider. Yep. Root. So, yeah, he's going to be the lanes as, as expected, then Confilifant, Plague Rider top, Kinesis mid, Gemini, Glacius bottom. I like two. it. I like those mind games there coming out from Tree. Again, they're not giving them the information until they have no choice but to accept it with uh, with their final pick right there, so... Uh, yeah, as you're pointing out, if they do end up doing that aggressive dual lane with the Plague Rider Cthulhu Font again, that double deny. Now, Cthulhu Font can't do it until level 3, but still, yeah. you'll have Plague Rider doing it right off the bat initially, and that's yeah, going to be... Uh, pre cancer. Yeah, that, that's going to be difficult to deal with. As Oh my gosh, I apologize. I had it on the prize pool screen the whole time. <laughs> Here comes the six-minute delay catch-up that... Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna put myself on D and D now just so I can stop the spam. <laughs> He's gonna go. Tell him to remove the overlay. <laughs> they always do that because you're always on D and D anyway. But everyone's like, yeah. "Oh my god, please tell Breaky to do <laughs> just make like, it stop." I'm like, <laughs> I just want to see the game. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. No, but uh, obviously you didn't miss anything other than the, you. You could. We were talking about it, so you can imagine what we we're talking about. Um. Anyway, so we're in the game now. Obviously, there's a pause, and so you haven't missed anything uh, of importance in that sense. Anyway, it's the first mistake I've ever made, guys. Come on now. Calm down here. All right, looks like uh, Reason Gaming is going to be good to go. Just a matter of tree. Giving their thumbs up, then we'll be good to move on here. Again, uh, Sync Esports, I know they've been, a couple of their players have been talking and chat every now and then, so it's safe to say they're, they're keeping an eye how this series is going in here, and Checking out how many Veiled Rots are being picked up and certain heroes. Checking out the Moira strategy of last game, I'm sure. Wondering if that could be a possibility again or not. But Plague Rider, though. Plague Rider is a fun hero as a caster, especially because, again, he has that uh, the fun, the Plague ultimate, which is always uh, good to cast. But, uh, you know, the Plague Rider really is, though. It's uh, He used to be such a staple hero. And, uh, I mean, these last couple of seasons even just has not really been a thing too much, though. Uh, despite him having, you know, I remember really when denying was the biggest thing. Like, denying uh, Suicide Lane, if you had a hero that had the capability to deny top lane, then you would pick up that hero. And Plague Rider, obviously, you know, the best of them. Uh, you know, this is back when Tempest could deny at level 1 and things like that, too. So, but that 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 idea, that strategy has died off in place of, of course, the pulling now. Pulling, yeah, most likely. What uh, everyone does now, so. That's, I guess, why the idea of just simply denying isn't as strong, but they're going to, or tree at least is the ideas, what we expect more so. They're going to 
And again, I, I know this was being brought. I said uh, I, you know, abuse that idea. Like when, when I say that, obviously I don't mean oh they're being yeah, cheesy, they're abusing something. How dare they? It's it's more in the terms of they're using it as they should be. They're using it effectively. Yeah. They're using the ability to. It's like I right. know I was mentioning that with Ephemeral Forge last game. A more run to be to to clarify. I'm not right. saying it shouldn't exist. And how dare they? <laughs> I'm it's more best so to be abused, complimenting man. them. Yeah, it's best to be abused. Using it as they should. So. Use and abuse it. Um. Ground Courier coming up top. You're going to send it to the Observatory, I'm sure, as we've seen this before. There we go. Danger Monkey on its mission here. Those are great videos, man. I don't know if you remember those, but that was uh, Enigma back when he was with the Han scene. Good old Danger Monkey. All right. Uh, Reason apparently not that great against Glacius. <laughs> so, Tree's a bad team to face if you're not good against Glacius. So they're just going to run an aggressive tri lane down here. Yeah. I guess it's a decent uh, strategy coming from Reason because they know. I think they might actually assume that an aggressive tri lane is going to happen from Tree because obviously, they, like I said before, they always play against it. And second of all, even if they don't realize that Tree are going to run an aggressive tri lane with Plague Rider, if Plague Rider is actually down here and Tree are running a defensive tri lane, <laughs> the aggressive tri lane from Reason is far superior than anything that Tree can complement with three heroes. So as a result, uh, they can easily win it. So probably that makes the most amount of sense of why they're actually rotating this tri lane down here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm dying there. Don't yeah, worry. as you would like. Well, up. I I, I mute the I muted the stream mic, but you can all still right, hear right. me. So you, that's fine. You're it's probably okay, it's like, are you okay? <laughs> they couldn't hear me at all, though. So. It's fine, man. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but yeah, I like uh, like what Reason's definitely doing here. Getting getting aggressive and again, Aluna and Behemoth. They're they're up there with two of the better support heroes to do a tri lane with. If you're going to be doing the tri lane action, so. And I think actually aggressive behemoth is is almost somewhat superior to defensive behemoth just because you have a better positioning to normally land um, good blocks off. Um, sometimes if you run it in a, de uh, a defensive tri lane, if the enemy team can get good lane control, then there's no way you can really block it. But sometimes you can uh, have better blocks in, in an aggressive tri lane, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Oh god, the six minutes has caught up. <laughs> Black screen. <laughs> Change the roller. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I guarantee you, I'm gonna get a couple Skype messages too about, hey, breaky. So you might want to change the overlay. It's it's good that people do that. I'm just saying, but yeah, it's with the six minute delay. It always is funny, huh? Kind of catching up on that. All right, look at this exchange though. Yeah, Gemini coming top lane. So immediately, Willow Keeper making some moves right here off the bat. Uh, they just want to secure farm on battle zones. Obviously, he's not gonna get anything down bottom. So it makes more sense. They're actually leaving bottom lane completely. It's quite funny actually. Yeah. They run sort it's of like, you know what? You want to, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Have three heroes down there. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. Let's go elsewhere. Maybe if Luna needs to rotate immediately, the best thing they can do is rotate mid, try and set up a gank. Um, that's normally the, the best way to do it, because obviously they need to get to the top lane, but instead of running straight top, they should try and be effective with their movements kind of thing. Uh, and set up a gank mid, and Kinesis are very easy here to gank as well, so they can make it happen. But actually a really good, nice wall place by Fusion here, so it will most likely spot any rotations. Well, it's going to see the Luna without a doubt, so... Uh, you got uh, definitely Behemoth making that move, but yeah, Luno gonna walk right next to the Warder side, as he called, and so Fusing gonna have plenty of that information of her being nearby, and so will Kinesis, more importantly, as far as uh, him being here in the middle lane. So he's playing a fairly safe, you know, getting some good farm at the same time as Boxy, eleven to five right now. Chipper ten and one here currently on his farm. So top lane, it's almost as if Plague Rider and Cthulhu Fodder are playing a little bit of babysitter, more so Plague Rider babysitter for Gemini. Cthulhu oh, Fodder's basically behemoth. been a jungler here. So it's an interrupt. Look at this behemoth. Though. Look at his positioning. I think he's waiting for Kinesis yeah. to go one more. There we there go. go. There's the wall off right there. Boxy was not ready for that. He does dodge one rocket. Some way, somehow, in the face. Every misses that more, so a power throw comes out. A couple more auto attacks, but he is going to survive. Missing that rocket was the crucial key right there. And probably the ultimate difference maker in the end. Yeah, so. definitely. That was uh, just good doctrine from Boxy. I yeah. mean, I like the idea from near though. Like, <laughs> try and set up behind him because I don't think he, he could get him out, outside. Oh my god, I just got messaged by three different people. <laughs> as, la as lapped goes, fix the overlay. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I need to go and do, do this. is ridiculous. <laughs> Getting spam. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That happened. Anyways, life moves on. Cthulhu Fawn, he's running into a interesting territory right here. The wall-off's going to be successful, but guess what? He has a trample that's like doesn't care. 
similar to Kraken as well in that respect. Yep. Right through the Fissure Studs, which I've always kind of thought, I don't know if that should be allowed personally, but... Probably not. Probably not, but uh, oh. it, it is, apparently. Oh, Plague. It is. Plague, right tile play, speed up blocks. Yep, he is going to be completely blocked. I'm looking at Gemini. He's like, I'm trying, man. I'm doing everything I can. He actually stuns eventually. You know, he had to get in position initially to stun, and obviously that's kind of one of the awkward things of Gemini with that Twin Fang stun. But, uh, you know, even if he was able to earlier, probably not going to be enough anyway. So good catch, though, by the roaming support. Hey, Aluna and Behemoth are up there once again as far as the <laughs> better roaming supports in the game. Yep. And we see why right there. It's just... That fissure stun just sets it up perfectly. Obviously, the power throw from great distance can be very powerful. And uh, not much they could have done. If Flagrider gets caught again, man. <laughs> Ooh. You see Behemoth nah, is that. here. Oh, Luna. Luna is coming over, actually. Yeah. Yep, there we go. There's the attempt. Oh, just not there. enough. Oh, jeez. Just jeez. Not a little he was bit. Like, if he was like 50 more units, that would have been a block. But yeah. Couldn't find it nonetheless. Glacius was there as well. He could have perhaps ice imprisoned Flagrider. Might have saved him, but we will never know. Because it didn't Result. happen. Yeah. Well, level 1 only 20% reduction, so. But yeah, it could have been. Who knows? Could have been interesting, but uh, yeah, again, we'll never know. Because the fun runs into Puppet Master right here. See, this is what I find fun about this hero. He's two level disadvantage, yet he just goes up to him and just right clicks him because he just doesn't care. He's got the hook him, and. Now, as I say that, he's taking some good damage, actually. <laughs> <And> <laughs> now, as I say that, oh my god, he's dead. <laughs> and as I say that, he actually dies now. Um, but I guess kind of going back to it. Once again, guys, patch 3.6 around the corner. Coming up, the, coming out with uh, this Wednesday, and uh, there's gonna be a lot of changes, and that is one of those that that's, that's gonna be stressed. Fun. Yeah, I got my stop plan. I much. know, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be great times. Yeah, I, uh, I might even make my uh, make a stream appearance here and there. Oh, a little damn. bit of a comeback. Is, do, do you do like you do like 900 2K stream team member? Yeah. 900. <laughs> So 1900 2K. Okay, I, th I, I was just like, how dare you, Mini? <laughs> I'm at least 1100. Oh, nice. My PSR is at least 1100. Uh, you know, I'd be down. I can carry you, I guess. <laughs> we'll see. Puppet Master, nearly 400 gold per minute. He's uh, just again, they basically gave up the bottom lane. They're they're just fine, almost like they did last game with Oogie. They they basically just saying, you know what? Get your farm on that one guy. We'll uh, lock down everyone else, and eventually take over the game from there. But yeah, this team not nearly as mobile as their last game. It's not a not a very moving heavy, you know, setting up ganks. Again, Moira was a big part of that. Of course Flux is obviously huge That's with that it. because of the discharge and So I, I don't know if the strategy is nearly as gonna be powerful this game as it was last game, but yeah, I mean, as long as they it. get as long as they get farm on Gemini, though, tree should be should be fine in that respect, and and that's what they have like adequate for. I think they've done like at least two or three rotations just to make sure that Gemini can get farm, and that's what they need to do, because you know if they don't get farm on Gemini, like I don't think Kefulifer or Kinesis will have such big impact in the game, uh, in sorry in the mid game to really free up space for Gemini. So it's always more important just to get him farm from from uh, the get go kind of thing. Play better level four up here. Getting his level 2 extinguished now, so a little more mana back as well as a little bit lesser of a cooldown, but the ultimate idea still stands of using it to deny against, uh, in this case, the Magmus up here. Uh, you can definitely see that working for the most part. Uh, again, everyone else really other than the Puppet Master being locked down. Chipper's, you know, 240 gold for me, doing solid. It's not much better on the Legion side, though, once again. Yeah, so the, yeah, both Gemini and Kinesis are on the same area. They're coming to the bottom lane, though. They are setting up. Four heroes right here. Water Sight will eventually spot them. But by the time they do, Behemoth's realizing, okay, nice wall off from Behemoth right there. To start it off, will it ultimately be enough right here? Puppet Master, big line stun. The mouse control. Puppet Master no longer apart right there as he just gets taken out, and so does Behemoth. So, what well, was a good attempt as far as to get away? They were just a little too late at reacting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the great chase is successful by Tree. So, they do address Puppet Master, and they do kill him. Great, uh, great movement coming out from Willowkeeper right there. Yeah, and, and at the same time, they're still being like they're, they're utilizing all the lanes very effectively as well. Obviously, Boxy still farming mid, and and the good thing about sort of support Plague Rider, oh, he's actually perhaps could have got a kill onto the Magnus, <laughs> but backs off in the end. But yeah, yeah I mean, this is what I mean. Like even though um, you know Kefilifen rotated onto the onto another lane to try and set up a game, he can still be there. Like you compare that to any other hero, like he as like a Rapsy or like a Pyro could not farm up there because uh, obviously he'd be. 
too much in danger. But with Play Rider, he has decent uh, lane control because obviously the extinguish, and so he can line up there uh, quite quite dandy. Well, he also, and we kind of saw right there. I mean, he has he has solid yeah, harassment, harassment, and yeah, on yeah. top of that, a damage or kill potential when he gets, as you see right here, the ultimate. Six. Um, that you know, obviously the contagion. Then you throw the ultimate. In. Even the initial damage, you're looking at what is that? 280 plus the 150 eventually, as middle lane as a uh, kill, of course, happening, but. Um, that's the, what, 430 magic damage right off the bat and then with potential for more with bounces, of course. So, yeah, he, he definitely has kill potential, so you got to be worried about that. But good find on a chipper in the middle end in the meantime as looks like Kinesis and uh, who is that, Cthulhu fun, yeah, come together and obliterate activated to help get the kill onto him. As uh, both the pause coming out here from Reason Gaming, just would be surprised. Some motivational pause here. They're down earlier on. It's, again, a game three after all, and want to make sure that they're all uh they're all on the same page here making sure they're <laughs> yeah i mean they in terms of what they need to do in this game, though, for one thing's for certain, they, they are going the issues to stride on in the board. I think this is the right decision here. If you guys whispering Helm, it'd be a little bit too passive, and he needs to have an impact in this game because his team is behind. Um, also, I think these, these ganks on Behemoth and, and Aluna, they need to start paying off because they've rotated a couple of times, haven't been able to really secure the kills, and as a result, you know, when you kind of run like aggressive supports like Aluna and Behemoth, if you're not getting kills, then you're going to be eventually out-farmed by the, the heroes from, from Tree and their support heroes. Like Plague Rider might not not have the best gank potential but at least he can get sort of sustained farm and uh, reason uh, in terms of behemoth and luna the only way they can sort of keep up is if they continue getting kills where in the moment they're just simply not um and outside of that there's not much they can do because magmas is nowhere near a portal key and chip is having a hard time middle lane as well so it is going to be depending on, on the supports and puppet master this game for reason to get back into the game yeah yeah, level two of luna not not exactly what you want again tps price to mention that last game too really struggling as far as getting any kind of farm bottom lane, we do have a lot of action brew, and now Magmus comes in level four. He's going to be spotted initially, and he's the one that might be in a lot of trouble. Kinesis with that Invisorin runs in. Now, he doesn't have the biggest mana pool currently. He is going to throw him up in the other with the stasis smash again. Not much mana to follow it up. Magmus studs out. Not enough, however. Boxy gets credit for the kill, as uh, he was able to have just enough to, to do him in. So, good chase right there, and Aluna remains level two. You see Puppet Master actually does port to the top lane. Realizes she's going to get better farm up here and maybe get a kill potential. Plague he has an ultimate though. Out comes up Plague Goon. No, he's not going to use it. Puppet Show is holding him in place, of course, and he will fall before he can get that off. And that is huge. However, here comes Cthulhu and oh, Emma boy. Very late reaction on his part. And I think, I don't know if he just didn't realize or if he was looking elsewhere, but he ends up getting taken out. Fisher's done does land, but it's obviously way too late. That was because of the cooldown. And he will survive at the end, but yeah, Puppet Master clearly something was up right there, and it, you know he might have it might have been something as simple as just looking back at the shop after that kill, but he he did not react nearly in time, but also a great play by Cracky definitely. Mm -hmm. Good rotation over, exactly. Um, but yeah, and uh, I don't know. Like again, the, the tree. I mean, sorry, reason or having a little bit of trouble actually. Like Getting out of this landing phase on hand, but actually top lane again, Behemoth <laughs> gonna be flopping, uh to be dropping. So yep. the rotation from Tree just they seem to be on the ball man like again I don't know what happened after game one, but they got their heads into the game. Game two is a kind of a stomp and game three is looking like it is well honestly. Yeah. If they keep up this momentum going against Sync, if they end ultimately win, then yeah, it should be completely different than what it was yesterday. Yeah. As far as it being one sided in favor of Sync Esports. So, yeah, clearly something clicked, and uh, they are most certainly on the ball. Now, of course, with that said, there is still plenty of game one or game three left, I should say. As uh, Reason Gaming definitely, it's, it's still only 11 minutes in, and sure they are down, but uh, they've been in worse spots and come from behind before. But it is going to be a tough task to ask, no doubt. Puppet Master. Assassin Trout, it looks like it's going to be the route that he goes here. You know, we talk about that all the time. The Assassin Trout of Whispering Helm debate of which you should go first in which case. And this case, it's like, well, we need kills. We need to make something happen. Yep. So Assassin exactly. Trout making sense here Definitely. for him, boy. Definitely. And um, I think, although Chiba has no items really to help in terms of ganks, I think he needs to get active because if he sits mid, um, yeah, okay, he's going to get average farm, but not only will he get average farm and not have really a big impact on Kinesis, but he's, he's sort of vulnerable and getting ganked as well. Like, if he sits mid, he has a potential to get ganked, whereas if he's off ganking, then, you know, they, they can't find Chipper in the lane, for example. So, I'd like to see him get, you know, active. Um, they could potentially try and um, dive the plague, but the only issue is that, you know, obviously all tree do have TPs, so... Yeah, they're in a little bit of a hard situation, honestly, but 
they need to start trying to get active, try and make these kills because sitting back and farming, I don't think it's going to get them back into this game. Mm -hmm. Now, Chipper going for the regen rune. You see Cthulhuphon here actually used that Veiled Rod to get in the area initially. As soon as Chipper comes back, he's in a lot of trouble right here, and I don't think he realizes it. Okay, actually going to be exposed before. Cthulhuphon's like, oh, you didn't see me. I'm going to go in the trees right here. <laughs> yeah, you're a big-ass elephant. I'm pretty sure he saw you. So, Cracky, not going to be able to be as sneaky as he was hoping for, but in the end, we'll just go into the jungle and uh, pick up some farm right there. Plague Rider doing his best, or continuing to do so to try to block them off the top lane, but as I say that, he gets gone on once again, and again, that puppet show is just too strong with the Voodoo Pup. A good play by Emma Boy as well as Root of Z, or uh, not Root of Z, he's the one that died, but near right there, setting up the Fissure Stun. Level 6 on Behemoth now as well, so they have uh, ways to uh, deal with this. Ooh. Yep. And he's just going to get spotted out by the, the rockets from Chipper as well. Embro playing very defensive as he should. Um, doesn't want to get picked up again. Well, again, we're starting to see the, the Veiled Rods being picked up here and starting to be used to an extent for trees. So that, that's where Reason's game is definitely going to start adjusting to if they weren't already. I mean, playing a very, very passive game now. And so, sure, it's what they need to do. Will that work out in the long run? Obviously, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, it's definitely what they need to do, and that is good to see for their sake. Staying in here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I like the veiled, the veiled rot sort of uh, sort of, cho uh, sort of choices. The reason being is because even if they're not sort of paying off, they're still trying to be active. You know, it does put reason on the defensive, and all the meantime, if if reason are on the defensive, it just gives more and more space for the Gemini keeps on farming, and you know, he's going to be the one that's going to carry them back into the game. So, just creating the space for Gemini is, is never a bad thing to do. Mm -hmm. Behemoth and Eluna up here at the top, and you mentioned level six Behemoth, so. A little more potential for that damage there with that shock. We have, of course, no portal key yet, but the idea is there at least. And I mean, he's pooling up about 800 gold, but again, this is always one of those situations, especially with a hero like Behemoth. It's like, do I just rush the portal key, or do I really, will it, is, it, is it better off spent, say, something like an Amulet of the XL, even in a full Grave Locket, before I uh, get that portal key? But If you have a Glacius in your team, you don't even have to think about it. But <laughs> True. Straight, straight, yeah. straight, straight portal key, but that's, that's honestly one of the things that Fuzan always talks about. It's like Glacius plus. Behemoth is an uh, awesome combo, but uh, I think in this game, I think he almost, I don't know, it's hard to say, like, he needs Portal Key to be impactful, but actually, Chipper hasted up, but he's still going to die. Yeah, he runs into them, apologize, which is, it's like, also when he's dying, I'm going to switch away from it. Chipper gets picked off, though, as the uh, Plague Rider, Glacius, and through them all collapse. Now, it was a little bit of a distraction yeah, right exactly. there. They do get still the tower just... kill for free in the end. So, I don't know if it's worth it, but uh, at the same time, it's not the worst thing ever. And happened right there as Magnus, he falls back too before Gemini is able to do enough to him. Gemini is 376 gold per minute, but yeah, look at him, my boy. He does continue to be on top at this point, 386, and he actually has, has the full Assassin Shroud now. We've already seen a couple of kills with him on that play right now imagine with the Assassin Shroud. I think he might potential. try and get level. I think he might try and get level 11 and maybe rotate to kill him to the Gemini, I think. Uh, level 1 Voodoo Puppet, I don't think he'll be able to kill him at level 2 or rank 2, so I should be able to take him out, but... Coming over here in the middle end, though. He does have all the way up. Yeah, he might get this Kinesis right here. Out comes the hole. The Voodoo Puppet's put out. You see the damage as a result. The Rock is doing some work. Puppet Show holding him in place, and down goes Kinesis. Glacius also picked off, so the Assassin's Drop making place right away. Plague comes out for the first time, and down goes Puppet Master in response, though. He ain't too tanky, and that showed right there. Great job by Cthulhu and Plague Runner, at least, to get some revenge. As they do lose a bottom tower as well. So, again, the big picture. I mean, sure, losing Puppet Master sucks. But overall, actually, pretty yeah, decent trades. there. Yeah, they're making good trades, honestly. Reason, obviously, the lost puppet master, but he wasn't too impacted. Obviously, he just bought the second shroud before he died and things like that. So, wait, how did yeah, Gemini die? To life. Oh yeah, he died bottom. Wow, um, I didn't even realize that <laughs> until Magnus and Behemoth combo. Okay. So. Yeah, not often you see Magnus and a Behemoth on the same team. By the way, that's kind of just hitting me. <laughs> but it's actually it's actually really interesting with Nia. I haven't mentioned it before, but he actually likes to sort of max heavyweight over the Fisher. Um, and normally because he likes to jungle oh. with it and have an impact in terms of farming the jungle. Uh, sorry, farming the jungle and sort of farming the lane creeps. Personally, I don't like it, but he seems to sort of stand by it and really like it. I know some other support behemoth players are quite torn on, on the issue as well, but um, hmm. I'm not a big fan of it, though. I'm not a big fan of I, it. I, I get that logic. It's actually it's, it's pretty sound, I mean, to really help get you your portal yeah. key ASAP and a little bit you of can, farm. Because you can farm with the W kind of yeah. thing if you max E. Um, Enraged, uh, personally, no. I'm not a big fan of it, but yeah, I mean, you can understand it. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely not saying it's. Uh, oh yeah, if you ever want to do it now, but it's yeah. uh, definitely some good logic there, and it kind of goes away from what what you would expect to be the norm of maxing out the fissure first. But yeah, 
He's uh, he's using it here to try to try to get that farm. Speaking of that, he has 1,400 gold now saved up. He did finish the power supply, of course, but it looks like now at this point he is definitely rush. going the portal yeah, yeah. key here. And I, I think that's probably best because although he won't be able to really sustain himself in terms of farming or even over like a couple of fishes, he won't have the ultimate uh, mana. Like one big team fight could be the difference, like with you know he, keeping himself in the game, and, and the mana ring is not going to give him that kind of clutch play. Uh, it's a risky play going Portkey first because you know if he doesn't get any good use out of it, then it's a bit of a waste. But um, sometimes you got to play aggressive, and, and he has to kind of go be a little bit greedy here. His team is behind. I think it's the right play to make, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quincy really stressing the TP is priceless. Process. I know we mentioned the last game too. Really, yeah. not the highest in levels, but uh, Fusions was the lowest though, with just 213. Oh wow. Um, that's the that's an average experience per minute per game. So yeah, it's second lowest as far as uh, supports go, I guess. Struggles to get those levels, man. It's it is the life of a support overall, though. Middle lane t tower is gonna end up falling. Wow, Emma Boy denies it. I didn't even see an attack animation go off. <laughs> that was just good timing by Emma Boy there, right there, though. And manages to at least take a little bit away from Willow Keeper. Was that a double damage rune that spawned right there? Yeah, I believe it was. Yeah, picked up by Kinesis, actually. And he does have the port king. Look at where they're going, right to the bottom lane. Magnus, there's no vision for him. So he's pushed up really far without vision. That, in the first place, is very risky, and we're going to see why here. Now, not the greatest coordination, oh. but who needs coordination when you have that much burst damage? Exactly. <laughs> Obviously, the uh, the stage smash is like, what, 50%? Yeah, 50% yeah, less damage. Um, but the trample doesn't do too much damage anyway. It's only, it does only 240, so it's 120 damage plus any kind of creeps that he took with him. So perhaps missed 150 damage, but like you said, clearly enough burst damage to take out Magnus regardless. Yeah, I think Kinesis could have killed him himself right there with the level 2 mass Probably. control. Probably, so. yeah. But uh, yeah, great. Uh, but as I was just saying, even going into that kill, though, Zane really pushed up right. No vision on that side of the map. That was just very, very risky. And uh, clearly, again, just kind of backfires there, so. Kind of having the heads up in the future that might might not want to risk doing that as could result in easy death once again, especially now knowing that they got the Kinesis portal key. Gemini has been very quietly doing his own thing. Palatas are here now with nearly 400 gold per minute. He's he's pretty much keeping up with Puppet Master. Puppet's slightly ahead of him, but at this point uh, you do see he's got a Firebrand pickup with the Energizer. So once again, it looks like the Geometer's Bane is very possible here as far as the Initial item. I mean, he could go the Frostburn, though. It's again, really comes down to what they feel necessary. I guess the Frostburn for helping to tank up a little bit more as far as the life pool goes wouldn't be out of the question. Bottom lane to the punt. Oh, he tramples actually right there. As Puppet Master, though, in visits in. You got a foul drop on Behemoth. He does have that portal key. So, yeah, they're, right, they're, they're trying to make a big play right away with it. It's Cthulhu Font, though. He's got a helmet of the Black Legion, played a Greaves, a hook him, which is now off, but. So Behemoth hasn't shown himself yet, though. So they, they're not 100% aware that he has it yet. We'll see if they yeah, actually they, get an opportunity. They should try and utilize it. Even if it's just a, like an ulti onto one here, I think it would be utilized and be worth it. Actually, middle lane Kinesis. There's a quick kill onto Chipper. It looks like Kinesis, though. Yeah. There we go. That's what you're talking about. And Kinesis is going to end up yeah, falling. Yeah, that's the portal it. key that makes it very worth it right there. <laughs> definitely. It's only maybe... Some people would say that's a bad, that's a bad use of his ultimate, but it's definitely not. Definitely securing one kill is, is going to be worth it. I don't think Tree will would be starting to take team fights. Like, there's no one item that Tree's going to be like, okay, now we've got this item to start team fighting. I think they're going to they just be happy to sort of take this late, keep on trying to make plays and keep on trying to make ganks. Obviously, if if there is any fadeable situation to take a tower, then that's fine. But until then, actually, actually in the meantime, Boy takes out. Plague as well. Yeah, Emma Boy loves or hates, whatever, however you want to look at it, I guess, but uh, this Plague Rider, uh, it's like the third or fourth time now. He's kind of just gone up there, he sneaks in, gets the kill, and gets out of there. Uh, you know, again, there's nothing he can do. He opens with the Assassin's Trial, the puppet shows up, and he's killing himself along with Puppet Master and killing with the Voodoo Puppet, so that's unfortunate for him. But Falling Victim, again, he picked up that those Plague of Greaves earlier on, so at least tanking up a little bit, but clearly needs more. He needs an astrolabe here, most likely, something like that. Stuff. <laughs> and a full staff of the master would be nice too. Yeah, increase that plague carrier damage, aka, AKA the plague goo. Was that a portal key on Cthulhu Fun? I believe so. Yeah, it was. Well, I'm just purchased that, so. A little bit more initiation now, him with that Kinesis. It's good to see for their sake. Chipper went the portal key, of course. Level 11 Chipper now is Embry. 
Uh, Puppet Master, ooh, going the Hellflower follow-up. Not going to go the Shrunken Head here. Yeah, really great item against Gemini because obviously he won't be out to obviously Twin Fangs away, but also if you do catch Gemini into his fire and ice form, you can Hellflower him to make sure he can't slip back into his um, main dog form. And until level three, uh, or sorry, until rank three fire and ice uh, ultimate, the dogs actually are somewhat weak and you can easily burst them down uh, to secure a kill. So I did like the item pick up here from him more as well. Makes sense there. They've got, uh, if, if it, Plague Riders are able to get that Plague U off, though, it's a lot of damage potential, a lot of magic damage potential, of course. That this Hellborn team's going to have to deal with it. Oh, yeah, it's not the most tankiest team overall either. Where's Chipper? Chipper middle lane. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and the portal key. Yeah, that wasn't even a portal key Kinesis. That was a portal key through the font, though, and helps to set up the kill. On to Shipper in that middle. But that kind of goes back to what I was just saying, too. I mean, again, this is not really a tanky team at all here on the Hellborn side. They don't really have that big tank presence. It's just all about, you know, the portal key jumps and the uh, sitting back on heroes like Shipper and Puppet Master. <clears throat> Makes Kinesis that much better, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a lot of targets to quickly burst down, that's for sure. And that's uh, what I was too saying, going back to the point of the Plague Ultimate uh, from Plague Quite. That's potential to do a lot here. Um, and, yeah, no minions either on the Hellborn side to kind of soak up some damage. So, yeah, it's, again, it's possibly going to be a big ultimate in these fights and could be decisive. But Frostburn was a choice for Gemini, yeah. It's a little bit tankier there. That's what is uh, he's is he's really... Yeah, he's, look. He's lucky. This is dangerous though. Like he's doing, like he's trying to go for like some single pickoffs, but maybe it was just to get into this position here, perhaps. But like if he gets caught out by two or three from reason, like he's gonna die without a doubt. Like maybe if he was with like the Cthulhu, it might be a bit different. But I, I don't know. I literally have no idea what he's doing right now. Like, <laughs> no Valrat, no TP. Like, it's just like he's got no TP. He's got no wards to sort of spy out any kind of incoming gank. So at least he's gonna try and do some kind of flank perhaps with tree yeah. when they're pushing the two one. Perhaps that could be the reason why. Oh, Glacius. Glacius runs in. Now he is going to be exposed right there. Finds Behemoth. He can't portal key because of the Thunder Blast. Here comes the Kinesis out of nowhere. So that's exactly what he was waiting for. Now he got the Shockwave off with the Chainsaws, but it's not going to be a turnaround kill either in the long run. So, or I guess, yeah, Glacius did fall. So I he just died so quickly. Didn't even notice. But, so Glacius for Behemoth there, really. Um, but, yeah, we did see a little bit right there of what Boxy ultimately had planned for half. So some teamwork kicking in. But not the, not the biggest exchanges either, though. Between those two heroes, and it's pretty slightly in favor of Tree, though. Behemoth thought it was used and stuff. True. Yeah, no, they don't have to worry about that, actually. But again, having a Behemoth and a Magmus, that's kind of good, because now, you know, sure, Behemoth is down, but they still have a Magmus eruption and jump in, so can't feel like they're really good to go, necessarily. Uh, Kinesis, actually, is he working on a staff, you think? He's got that glowstone. Yeah. So I guess that really There's sense. nothing else that he would go for. And, I mean, like, he's been doing a lot of work, actually, in terms of pickoffs with the mass control, and. He doesn't need to um, any other items. He's got the initiation from Portal Key. Oh, that. two TPs coming up top. Yep, Behemoth again doesn't have a shockwave, but that doesn't mean he's still not a good initiator. Of course, he can uh, definitely yeah. jump in with a Fissure Stun. That in itself is a very powerful tool. Or he could use a long range like that and kind of harass them, push them back. Definitely one of the best, hell, you could argue the best counter pusher in the game. With Artillery, man. Fissure, okay. well, okay. <laughs> Actually, with the Doombringer is pretty good, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm but. joking, I'm joking. Yeah. Hero so yeah. that, that's actually played. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, yes, yeah, so Tree actually going to start taking the 2 one tower. I don't think Reason will have fight without Behemoth Hulk here, to be fair. And Shrunken is being built on by Imbaboy as well. And, I mean, Tree have great initiation with Kofilipun and, and Kinesis, so... Reason do not want to be taking that team fight. going to start trying to push out other lanes in the meantime, but just a good... Um, Capitalization from Tree knowing that actually they are the string of team fight team and they can easily rotate top and, and take the team fight if it's needed to be happening. Kind of thing. <coughs> Hitting up the ancients. You're gonna go back to the, you know, Bouches are playing this uh, Gemini here. It's been, been fairly quiet again. Four assists out of the 12 kills in total. So stat wise, you know, he's been like somewhat involved, but really just uh, playing more of the farm game. But even despite that, Puppet Master still remains right now about 20 gold per minute higher or so. And, uh, yeah, we do see kind of transitioning now as we're talking about. As far as the Mighty Blade pickup, possibly. No, is he? He probably is going to still finish the Hellfire, though, now that I think about it, yeah. Um, yes. Gets the Mighty Blade uh, just for survivability. Yeah, right I mean, I'd assume so. <laughs> I guess it depends where it, 
does he want more pickoff potential or does he want to have a, like a way of dealing with tree in terms of team fights with the shrunken head i guess it's um yeah kind of, i mean he might like depending on how the next five minutes go he, he might even switch up his item build depending on which one it is yeah oh chipper oh. Chipper is he in trouble. Ooh, he portal keeps before he gets caught right there. Top lane in the meantime. Kinesis gets caught out. Shockwave going to be used. He wanted to kill Luna, but it's not going to let it happen. Maybe? No, he could have kicked it off. They locked him down a little too much, and Imba Boy actually even comes in for the kill right there. So, And you actually see, yeah, he purchases the shark and head right after that kill. So he wants to so take yeah. up a little bit. And start taking team fights, perhaps. Uh, they could even perhaps take... I mean, they don't have the greatest Concord killing team. They also do have West Spring Ham and Puppet Master, but I don't think it's going to be enough, honestly. But mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to see. They might start trying to take tier two, two, the tier two towers from Tree, but we'll have to see. Man, this was a huge start, too, for Willowkeeper, I'm remembering. I mean, this it was like 10 minutes in, and they were already up like 5,000 gold, 7,000 experience, and things were looking pretty good for them. But clearly, recent gaming kind of really toning down the game as far as uh, the mobility of tree and again having a luna behemoth though though the levels you know maybe not the prettiest they're very good roamers and they've definitely been able to do it up have they got the portuguese like, I was like we talked about so um they're really this is this is a game now i mean this is clearly not a, a one-sided game at this point so and yeah i mean puppet is is has is a decent hero against gemini as well because like you can, can lock him down quite uh, effectively obviously with the health i've been picked up now being close to picked up um like in the like super 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 late game, I think Gemini's eventually going to take it, but um, that's a, a long way off. So, yeah. Reason they like said they're still in a very good position at the moment. So Chipper Porter King away just in case right there. Uh, in the middle lane, Puppet Master though, pushing up the top lane and going to start falling back. However, as realizing they might be heading over as they are, so good decision on his part. Well, maybe he's now kind of coming back in and. Gonna poke in a little bit, but no, now we'll finally fall back. Glacius nearby, but of course no pork or anything like that to catch, so. Continuing the farm thing, he's actually gonna pull the Ancients. Yeah, he just got them in time. Well played right there. With that Tundra Blast of his, a puzzle box. I can do the point. Yeah, level one. Level that up here. There you go, in fact. That's a level I'm, two now. I'm pretty sure you can trample his own puzzle box minions into the enemy team, sort of give them, like, so just make sure you yeah. hit him. Yeah, it's quite funny to see actually. But huh. um, so not only does it sort of synergize quite well with the trample because it does more damage with the more units that hit the hero, but also because you know puzzle box moons can be kited if they're not high enough level. So uh, it sort of gets them where they need to be, kind of thing. Sort of pushing them forward, like kind of like a mini tablet kind of thing. But. Yeah. Now I, I was I saw the the, the major Toto on Playground again. He had the bolstering armband as well, so I was like, I was like double checking. I was like, Dude, nothing really makes that, does it? So, but uh, he actually decided to change his mind. Maybe he actually goes a tablet here, finishes that off. But uh, we'll possibly still get. Um, well, actually, no, that wouldn't even make an astrolabe. So like, I don't know what he's planning to get with that bolstering armband. Probably another uh, puzzle box, probably. Puzzle box as well. Can you? Yeah, man. Aren't there, aren't, yeah, isn't well, there a not, timer yeah, on it, though? There's a, but, there's a cooldown, but yeah. I mean, I'm saying that he'll probably eventually turn eventually, it into like, I bet, yeah. I bet they were saying, okay, well, guys, we need a puzzle box. And, and Brute's like, no, I'll get one. And then Cracky's like, you have no farm. I'm going to buy one because <laughs> you're the... Uh, probably something like that, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he probably will eventually. Like, you can have, you can obviously have two puzzle boxes, but like you said, there is a cooldown. I think it's like seven minutes, I think. Um, but then Plague yeah. is still a, a long way off until then anyway, so we'll probably work <laughs> out in the end. Uh, I mean, yeah. they need the puzzle box for the like the Indies from Puppet Master as well. Just ways of dealing with him, so it's a nice item to pick up. Altogether. Yeah, and again, even before level three, now it, it will see the Invis. That's a change that happened a while ago, but just in case, just in case somebody was thinking that, I'm sure somebody was. Uh, second Arcana picked up by Puppet Master, so he's very close now to the Health Flower here. And finishing that again, stressing how important that is to have against a hero like Gemini, especially. Who actually has that geometer's bane? Another 2,500 gold saved up here. 2,200 gold saved up on Kinesis. So getting closer to finishing that staff of the master, even more burst potential on him. And both teams pretty content on making this a very, very uh, farm game now. It's, it was a great action-packed start here, especially more so for Tree. But as the things have moved on, of course, now 31 and a half minutes in, almost only 12 to 10 hero kills. That's where we remain. As uh, I think it was just yeah, full frost of skull finished in the meantime. No, just a blessed arm. Okay. That makes more sense. So it gets the Blessed Orb here. Going to be a full Frost of Skull for uh, Gemini. Look at this minion army as well from Imber Boy. Minotaur and Wolf Commander just sitting on him. 
Uh, where is he? He's here in the middle, yeah. <laughs> yep, we talked about that yesterday. A little, yeah. Somebody got the wolf miner as well. I think that might have been Imboboy, actually. Yeah, it was Imboboy. Uh, it need, it I needs, think, yeah. needs the pro snot boss as well. I'm saying, I dude, I, I've I've been a huge advocate <laughs> of the snotter boss for the longest time. <laughs> is that Ophelia's have no clue what they're doing, basically. Bunch of noobs. When it comes to late game, who cares about crowd control? Get, get the snotter boss, the wolf commander, and the frost ogre. And you're set, man. <laughs> All the auras, all those auras, and the team benefits. They need to do. They need to do, when you upgrade to similar rage, you can take over ancients as well. That'd be true. Why? Like why, stuff. why are you? Uh, why are you giving sneak peeks to three point six, man? You shouldn't be doing that. What? God. <laughs> well, like star, star for the master parasite. That's Take not actually a off. thing, guys. <laughs> That's one of our freaking people out. What? <laughs> similar rage? You can take over ancients? <laughs> no, well, like, not a star thing. the master parasite takes over Congo. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool though. I can't wait for that to come in. <laughs> God, you're so true. <laughs> oh, Kinesis. Uh, yeah, Kinesis in trouble. He's got the shield up a little bit. <laughs> it just damages the creep. If anything, it will give him a good shield right there. Is it going to be nothing? No, it's not. In comes a shockwave. Glacius also goes down. <laughs> that just, that honestly looked pretty funny. But, you know, unfortunately to the demise of Tree, though, I mean, good catch on a boxy. That's twice. They fight yeah. you. TPS priceless, but they've counted with them, and that's a result. They're gonna start taking Congo now. So, yeah, good play from Reason, but man, Foxy really doesn't like TPS priceless. So he's twice he's tried to kill them, but has been done to do so. And now here's that Congo. Now buyback on Kinesis already. So they're, they're really. J it's not even gonna be worth it though. I mean, he needs to get to ASAP. He's coming over. They only had a secondary tower. So couldn't really pour that quick to it. And okay, it is gonna scare them off the trampoline. Will hit Puppet Master. Now he is in advance. Here comes the mass control that will appear. Now Fidget Touch does him in the background. The Hellflower applied to Kinesis oh. as well, actually. Beautiful play by Emma Boy, but still not enough to ultimately get away in the long run. So the buyback does make it worth it right there. And now Magnus being chased down. Stays the smash, but the follow-up. It is gonna follow up actually. Kazulavon comes in. Play got here as well. He still has his play goo if necessary, but. No, the retreat actually happening from Reason Gaming. Puppet Master's dead, and he's not buying back, actually. So what looked like Reason Gaming being in a great spot, all of a sudden it's going to be a Congress deal for Tree. Yeah, and that was honestly just a great initiation from Cracky. Like, he got a perfect, like, a blind stun onto Puppet Master. And the puzzle box moves doing so much damage, honestly. And obviously, when he went invisible as well, he could still he could still see him. So, just great play from Cracky. And definitely, like you said, the buyback was definitely worth it, actually. They might be able to catch more as well. Yeah, they're... Thinking about it, Plague Rider, he's kind of tempting fate there a little bit, but no, going to be fine. And Tablets away, joined back, joining back with his team. Uh, you got, uh, of course, Gemini picking up that token once again, and this is easily a secondary middle tower kill. You got Behemoth fit, or his ultimate. Now, they still have a Magnus Eruption, and uh, Behemoth ultimate is coming up in 10 seconds. So if they actually stick near uh, nearby this tree, then they could actually have something going here. But a tree is smart, you know, they're going to fall back, it looks like. Especially with Puppet Master coming up very, very shortly. So, not going to risk anything and for good reason. But, yeah, I, just, I mean, the way that started, you figure that would have just been a complete uh, momentum shift for Reason Gaming. But Tree, no, they say. And uh, Kinesis, obviously, that buyback. I was really questioning if that was going to be worth it, but clearly it was. As it did get Reason Gaming to kind of retreat initially and ultimately picked off. So, yeah, that could have on Trample, though, the way that started. Mm. <laughs> it was almost a blind right. stun and happened to catch it. It was. Like without that, that reason could have easily turned it, but just great play. Like that could have backfired so easily at the same time. So it's one of those plays. It's like it, it, in this case it worked, but at the same time it could have just been a terrible initiation for Krakow. But mm -hmm. that's the point about Hondo, man. Like it's just almost it, team fights are level or balancing on like a pinhead. It can go either way. Kind yeah. of Plate mail picked up by Cthulhu Fun actually. So he's got that level three puzzle box now. Going to be going for an eventual Frostfield plate here. And actually, that uh, already is such a tanky hero. Why not get a little more tanky? And again, a Frostfield played also just a great um, aura to have for the team. And, you know, in terms of what it does, too, with that amount of attack speed and everything. So it's a, just a strong tool in general. So um, he may not necessarily need to be more tanky, but he's getting it for the other purposes, too, which makes sense here. The stab of the Master for Kinesis, again, the buyback and everything, is obviously still delaying it here. But uh, getting close, Krake continuing to farm extremely well, passing crucial 400 gold per minute mark for him. He's actually 13 and 0 when they have when he has. So we talk about Mickey addressing the Mickey for Sync Esports. Apparently, it's addressed the Krake for Willowkeeper too, man. You address him, you uh, lock him down. Then I mean, 400 gold per minute though. That's actually <laughs> it's a little more than than uh, 
you know, doing bad by any means, so. But still, he's 3-0-8 uh, here on the Cthulhu font. And that's good news, more good news even for Tree at this point. It looks like they're actually going to fend off the bottom lane with not even the max amount of players, and they even deny the tower on top of that, so. Oh, Magmus. Good hold there. It's the top lane. Magmus, Behemoth going in. They're really thinking about trying something here, but the illusions in the background are wrecking Chipper. Chipper, yeah. <laughs> he has to get away. Oh, boy, that, that, I mean, that's bad news. Yeah, I think even Tree could have even turned up against them. They were like 2v3, but I guess they were just scared of any incoming TPs from Puppet Master, for example, so. Puppet Master's still in the vicinity, though. He might be in trouble, perhaps, but. Yeah. That should be fun. Did he just buy out for the staff? I think he got everything necessary, yeah. So he does have the staff now. Of course, that gives him, like, what, two more? Maximum units left to 10 now, instead of Cecil, three more even. Yeah, geez. Even more burst potential on top of that. So I guess it's 300 more damage in the, in the long run, if I'm doing my math correctly. And it is an AoE tool, is that mass control, so that's 300 more AoE magic damage coming out. Potential at least, so that's a solid pick up there, and overall just good stats, of course. There goes that top tower kill. Gemini the token, we're looking at about a minute 20 now remaining on that token of life, so pretty good timing here. This will give them at least yeah. this next creep wave to possibly push, and I don't know. I think that okay. I think they're still quite scared of the initiation from Behemoth from Magnus, even though they've got token on Gemini. Like one bad team fight from Tree. I mean, they're in a good position at the moment. Obviously, they want to take it to the grand finals, but one bad team fight could be all that need, reason need to get back into the game. And when you've got heroes and Magnus and Behemoth, you you want to play uh, defensive mm -hmm. and not go high ground. And like as I said before, man, like late game. Anything can happen, put simply, so they're going to try and minimize the mistakes. Yeah. They can take the outer towers, but pushing high ground with no vision, put into a chokehold against Magnus and Behemoth is just too scary. <clears throat> you look at Reason Gaming, they're watching their tower from afar right here, probably just going to give up the secondary tower. Maybe not, actually. Puzzle Box. One gets destroyed, but of course they can see out yeah, Puppet Master. He denies the tower and he pops the shrunken head. So risky. So damn risky. And it even I mean, even though he lives there, the I mean he did use a shrunken head charge to ultimately do that. So I, I, I don't actually think that's pretty worth it, honestly. No, it's not, that's what I'm getting like, at. Because, yeah, like Tree are so far ahead to go and experience like and the game is like forty minutes into the game. I think the denier changes what half, less than half I think in terms of the denier gold and it's like well it's not that much honestly. But for this, At the risk of nearly well. dying. Exactly, yeah. That's yeah, just yeah not yeah. worth it. <laughs> so a little, a little uh, overzealous there was uh, Imba Boy, but hey, he doesn't die again. He uses the truck at head. It's one second off now, and he can—he won't have it now even for another 35 seconds. So if he gets caught and not able to use it, then that'll even make it that much worse. But he should be fine now. Uh, Balthazar does get the full Behemoth heart though, and you know, again, we stress how great of an item that is, especially on a hero like Gemini, because it increases his damage as well, and not only in a strength hero sense because he's agility, but because of the armor pen, of course, from his uh, twin fangs, no elemental force. Is what it's called, of course. Used to be called Twin Fangs a long time ago. Did it? No, it didn't. Yes, it did. Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, they changed the names around. I forget. Because it used to do like the double auto attack, which was kind of meh. This one, yeah. though. This one's great. Whoa, Veiled Rod. Holy crap. They're really trying to get a catch here. Almost baiting out Magmus, too. They might get Gem, and uh, <laughs> he just went off to the side there. That, I I don't know, like, if something really gave him a cue, but the fact that he literally went into the tree right here pretty much saved him from initiating, getting initiated on. <laughs> if he didn't cut into the tree right there, if he went up a little bit further, they would have definitely jumped him, so. It does have only 4,000 HP, though. Yeah, so but, like yeah, you're right. It probably would have been bad for a reason, <laughs> if anything, so. It's probably good for a reason not that he did that. I think I'm just thinking of what Gemini's next item will be. Like first natural reactions would be like a oh, wingbow, but at the same time, Pomas is a natural savage mace carrier, so he might even instead try and go for the the Gunjuro instead. But I guess we'll have to see his next item um, will be. <coughs> Bottom lane, all five grouped up here. Can he see? But <laughs> boy, still has his army with him, the Wolf Commander and the Minotaur. <coughs> he actually has another charge on the Whispering Helm up, so. Needs to take over um, Isogar. Exactly. Or it's not a boss. <laughs> Isogar still exist, right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> it's like, I know we've had some changes in the jungle, but those are still a thing. I'm kind of looking through, seeing if anything is here, but nope. 
No ice ogres. Could get an alchemist ogre. That's always fun. Actually, I got some puzzle blocks. That might not be a bad option. Yeah, I think. That's well, I <laughs> not, yeah, I never thought about that. <laughs> that's a good cool break here. That's kind of one of those. I mean, hell, we see yeah. people invest 1,900 gold into getting an alchemist bones for that purpose alone. Man. Why not? Uh, that's a really good point, take actually, over break a it. creep, yeah. Breaking the new meta game change up so. all these strats. People don't realize I'm the one that basically changes the meta every time. I, just, yes, yeah. I, I keep it kind of quiet though. And yeah, like not, behind closed doors. Not trying to so gloat or anything. But That's actually basically a really good point all me. though. The only issue is that you know, the hero, the the, um, the creep is so squishy that it, like with a lot of AOE, which tree actually have, um, it will most likely um, just die before it can have that kind of impact. But I like the idea though. It could definitely have a potential depending on if it works in practice or not. Oh, I'll see if he decides to change the meta or not. Frostfield Plate is almost getting closer to being finished on Cthulhu Fun here. Needs that staff and then, what, like 400 gold for the pattern? It's one of those cases, like, why is there even a pattern at that point? But oh, 600 gold, I guess. Okay, a little more. But anyways, he's getting closer. I think it's... The reason why I think pa like if patterns are so low uh, so low uh, cost, it's more because so they can't split it for anything else. Yeah. Kind of thing. Because obviously with a pattern, you can't uh, disassemble it to anything else, and that kind of I nerfs mean, the art slightly. A little people bit. getting a frost steel plate going into building into a sheep stick is that actually would that actually be a thing? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Just. I, I guess at the same time, making a six hundred more gold, you know, makes it that much more. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Costly. That's like okay. Do I want to get a frost steel plate or not? That's fair. Um. Ancients, they are being cleared out. I'm disappointed, man. We really haven't seen a big play. We haven't really been seen a big team fight in general this game, honestly. Nah. It's just been a lot of ganks and pickoffs here and there. So uh, I guess that's a good thing. It's it's coming. I mean, there's going yeah, to be a big team exactly. fight here. And I, and I think both, to, like, whenever you play a mirror matchup, either it can be completely chaotic, which it kind of was in the early game, or it can be quite passive because, you know, neither team want to make a mistake. And, um and like with, with these sort of strategies, like you don't kind of want, you don't really want to be team fighting kind of thing, um, because obviously you want to get your farm with your carries. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, Glacius up here, kind of leading the way, baiting out for his team perhaps too. Again, using this, that what I think that's even a Glacius ward that he's using. So, Look at that representing this hero right there. Well, if if there's one guy that would have the Glacius wards, it'd be Fusen. You know that. Magmus pushing up the bottom lane a little bit, but. Probably going to fall back. Yeah, going to fall back for the time being. <coughs> is Congor back up? He is. So Congor's up. You think that's, uh, that's going to start drawing some, some attention here. As yeah, Reason Gaming already kind of in the area. You see Bound Diana Luna. She's using it. Yeah, it's a completely dark Congor pit right now for either side. Yeah, look at that. Kinesis play. Chuck stuff in the air to get kind of vision huh. over Congor. It's kind of cool. That it actually gives you, you vision some, over. Yeah, yeah, it gives, gives you flying vision. Yeah, yeah. Huh, gives you nice. flying vision of like maybe a thousand. It's actually going to get spotted, Did, actually. That also might, gives you vision. Well, yeah, that was close. Yeah, yeah they, they do have a Luna, so of course the idea of trying to ninja a Congor here is probably not going to happen. But. And just uh, trying to ninja Congor against Magnus and Behemoth is very, very risky because the, the choke hold is, or you know, the choke is just very, very small. Yeah. Gemini. We'll just farm elsewhere. He's like, alright, if this game's gonna continue to go on, might as well even get that much beef here. <laughs> and he's because of again that passive ability, he's one of the best scaling late game heroes in the game. Yeah, so. and and I think the more tanky he gets as well, the more the less and less impact Puppet Master is gonna be. Because I mentioned it in the last game, but Puppet Master is one of those heroes that uh, He's a great carry hero, but normally it's because of his great control and the ability to sort of burst the enemy carry down. But when you're you're building like nearly 4,000 at HP, even if he gets a good lockdown with puppet Mar uh, with the the voodoo puppet, I just don't know if he's going to be able to really lock Gemini down. And so the later this goes, I think Tree are in a slightly better position, honestly. All right, this is interesting. Feld Rot, another good so, spot. Magnus, will they get the jump? Nice oh, job with the steam well, bath. Yeah, really nice. Zane, a very very quick reaction right there to make sure he did not actually get caught. So. And that's where, you know, I think, safe to say, Kinesis especially needs something, some kind of catch item. Like a sheepstick would be ideal, of course. Yep. And that, that's where you also look at the staff of the Master. Was that the best option for him? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's really good for pickoffs and also decent for team fights as well. Um, and staff is uh, quite considerably cheaper than sheepstick as well. So you have to take that in mind. And actually, oh, it's illusion, don't I? 
scouting out with them, but again, there's the Aluna. That was a green power throw, but still. Close they enough while they also have well. rockets, yeah. So I mean, yeah that... There's no way you're ninjaing a Kongra. Yeah. The only problem, though, is that obviously they know it's going on, but they don't have continual vision kind of thing. This is like every two or three seconds, so trying to initiate when you have sort of a disjointed vision is very, very risky. Um, but it, it does seem that Tree are somewhat discouraged in taking it. Actually, Puppet Master goes all in on the Savage Mace, so if he does drop here, that could be a couple of racks, if not the game, if he's not careful. Yep. And you got to think, if Tree sees that, like, it's going to be good information for them. No, that's the case. Middle lane, Cthulhu Font, he's, he's hanging out. He's by himself, actually. If it just done, it's on the wrong side. Not really, though. Magnus falls up. Here's the lockdown again. <laughs> Do I need to say it? He's so freaking tanky. Is he tanky enough? No, he's up on the mass control counter. They take out Magnus, and he is not buying back. He actually bought an item. It wasn't delivered, though. He bought the shrunken oh, head. It's on the courier. They also catch Behemoth, oh, Behemoth Shockwave, I should say. He didn't catch Behemoth. Behemoth caught them, and Glacius ended up falling. But yeah, you can see Reason Gaming still not really the most comfortable fighting, but Puppet Master though, he has to fight. They make him Gemini on top. There's a mass control coming out of down. Goes Puppet Master in the long run. Plague not used because Plague is dead, but it doesn't matter. The chase is happening. Aluna, she's going to have died as you just stated. Yeah, there's no buybacks oh, on Puppet God, Master is, or Magnus. Uh, Reason Gaming, that decision to jump a Cthulhu font in the middle lane. Uh, Are they, they still, they're still scared of Behemoth. Like, I I'm surprised they're not going for this. I guess obviously we have God Vision, but still you'd expect them to try and bait the buybacks unless they're still scared of Behemoth and Chipper. I mean, you know Shockwave's done. Yeah, that, that's very surprising, actually. I don't know what Tree's doing here because they got a Gemini who's farmed out of his mind. And with a Chipper and a Behemoth, they're not going to kill him. So. Conger Ether. It's a questionable decision, but... I guess I think they know they've you know they've got this late. Like you saw the difference between Gemini and Puppet Master. Like obviously Puppet Master did get initiated on, but still um, the Puppet Master he jumped onto Plague Rider, burst him down. Yeah, that was fine and all, but just still didn't have the same sort of carry potential in terms of the team fights uh, as Gemini. And now he's picked up the the uh, the, the Wingbow, but Savage Mason Puppet Master. But yeah, I'm really surprised they didn't. I think that could have been Rax perhaps, but yeah. I guess it was only Gemini and and she and uh, Kinesis and. Like I said, they've got the late game, so they can play it late. Play safe. Yeah, Magnus, yeah, again, that was a little bit miscue, too. He was having the Shrunken Head delivered, but it was on the way as they... I mean, obviously, you know what a jump is. Now, again, they shouldn't fall for this here. It's pretty obvious that, first of all, it's a Gemini with a double damage rune in his farm, but second off, there's support nearby. So, yeah, they're in the vicinity, but they're not going to dare jump him right there. Um, but, yeah, point being, they weren't really fully ready to go, even though they, they jumped themselves, and... We saw the end result. But like you're talking about, I mean, Tree, you know, really they didn't capitalize nearly as effectively as they definitely could have, it felt like. So it's in the long run not the worst case for Reason Gaming. And definitely still game left, really, is what that comes down to. But Glacius kind of playing a little sneaky here, seeing if he can catch anybody. But not going to be the case. So Congor, he's regened all that life, actually, that he had uh, taken away from him earlier. But going to be fine for... No one's going to do him for the time being. Look at Gemini, though. He got that wing bow now. Can go, builds it into the Savage Mace, really, but it's one of those cases. Still, it's, it's still a great good, item, yeah. regardless. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what's it? Okay. It, does, it does obviously force the Puppet Master sort of, like, in that case, he, he forced Puppet Master to go to the Savage Mace instead of the holding for buyback because he's fighting against wing bow. Oh, Gemini. Oh, wow. That's a big, big chance, actually. Puppet Master, the big burst travel comes out. Will it be enough for strain right there? Puppet Master... Yes, Gemini will go down in the background. However, Luna gets picked out, so not the biggest deal in the world. Puppet Master still well alive. He got the play goo off, but a spread coming out here from uh, Reason Gaming, and it mitigates plenty of damage. Good through the font, and Kinesis are still here. Kinesis, the mass control, doing some good damage. Will it overall be enough in the long run? Good through the font, doing what it can. It will kill Puppet Master, actually, but down goes good through the font, and now it's a three versus one. Lockdown from Behemoth coming out. He's already used Fissure, but Kinesis taking way too much damage. He will fall a five for two exchange and a wow. genocide for reason gaming by build rot man that Jeez. was just huge Look at the had gold no experience clue. change as well they were like the eight thousand gold and nearly eighteen thousand experience behind but after that team fight they really have swung it but I'm surprised they even be able to. They was they just about bursted down Gemini if they did burst him down that could have been a, a very bad uh, return but 
I, I guess they, they eventually did do it in Puppet Masters. The Voodoo Puppet is still doing a lot of damage on top oh, of the, yeah. the Behemoth ulti as well, but wow. Yeah, the enhanced damage that he's taking for the Voodoo Puppet, of course. It's, I'm not surprised, again, especially with a jump like that, even as farmed as he is. No one's going to be able to survive that, really. That was just well played by... And who would have thought using a Vald Rock going into a fight like that this later on mm -hmm. in the game that's been so tense would actually be the big difference maker. And that certainly was. So, you know, Tree, you know, even looking a little bit back at what happened at the Conger Pit, not really trying to bait out buybacks. If anything, again, they didn't even have buybacks, so they clearly could have gotten a little bit more. But they were playing it very passive, very safe, and... Now you see what happens here. Reason Gaming finds the opening they've finally been looking for this whole time. And all of a sudden, this, as you pointed out, the gold is getting nearly identical now, 52 minutes in. And experience-wise, obviously, you know, take that you will. We got a, well, no one's level 25 yet, actually. So it actually does still mean a little bit here. But uh, point being, it's still plenty of game left. And this being the game three, wouldn't have it uh, any other way here against Sync. I <laughs> once again see their players in chat here kind of communicating as they do, but uh, they are waiting patiently, hopefully patiently. Nearby is uh, ready in the grand final. It's going to face the winner of this series. Right now, though, we still are undetermined on who that may be. No Fireblade coming out for Magnus. Now, why would he want this, you think? Of the, um, I think normally it's uh, against the Stasis Smash from Kinesis. I'm pretty sure you can actually nullify that or take it off instantly. It's kind of cool. Huh. Well, I mean, because there's no, like, Sheepstick or Hellflyer on the Legion side. So, in that sense, it's not really doing a whole lot. Um, how does that work against Puzzle Box minions? Uh, I, I, I assume don't, it, it, it does kill him, but at the same time, it's like, why would you want to, like... Well, like if it's obviously, that yeah, exactly, kind of thing. But I'm pretty sure it's just to get rid of the Stasis Smash from Kinesis. Hmm. Wait, the so thing. you can use items if you're actually Stasis Smashed? Yourself no, 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 or uh, for teammates, well, uh, you're saying? Teammates. Oh, okay, teammates, okay, yeah. that, makes, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I guess, you know, th there are some other positives to you, like it will remove, like, Plague Rider armor, which is nice. I, I just feel like, are we missing something obvious? Because, I mean, that's good. Is that really good enough to get it, though? I don't know I, if it is. I, I think a shoot stick would be better, but... Oof. Yeah, oh, there's a jump here in the middle lane. Magnus going in, channeling that eruption. Here's a Shockwave follow-up, and Gemini once again is falling. He will go down. Before he can put out much damage, but Puppet Master taking a lot of return himself. Kinesis is a big part of that play group bouncing around as well. No, he hasn't used it yet. Is he going to use it? No, yes, he got it. No, he didn't. I thought I saw the animation at the last second, but he could not get it off. A buyback from Gemini, by the way, but Puppet Master also buys back. And both teams retreating from one another. Wow, though. I mean, that jump, the shockwave was absolutely huge, no doubt. How is Plaguegutter not getting off the Plague U, though, man? I, he needs to be able to get that off in these fights. Yeah, but I mean, he's got Portal Key as well, so, like, he shouldn't have any issues with his positioning in terms of getting the, the Portal Key off. But as a result, gets picked off, and again, man, the Behemoth is making big plays. A uh, man near Behemoth. Uh, I can't stress it enough. Yeah. Wow. I. This is going to be. Is, this is not the third, is it? This is the second, I want to say. Oh, we're going to find out here shortly. Yeah, okay, second. it is the second. So, token of life, no surprise here on Puppet Master. <laughs> I still can't. Yeah, yeah. Plague not being able to get an ulti off, but just all you know, Gemini getting killed, and again, I'm pretty sure he was locked down once again for most of that, uh, which is why they were ultimately able to help burst him down. But then Puppet Master, he he took a lot of damage from something there, and my guess it would have to have been uh, Kinesis, of course, using his main focus on that. So, especially after the shrunken head was used or. Again, I assume this Shrugging Head was used that five, but yeah, it's only at five seconds, so. When a lot's going on, it's hard to tell sometimes, but um, in the end, both of the carries ended up dying, but yeah, the buyback situation, just a little bit stronger for reason, and actually, uh, although Puppet Man was the only one to technically buy back, but as far as everyone, everyone up, able to do Congo with that, so. That they do, and they have their first lead, uh, I almost want to say of this game here, <laughs> of what is game number three, and go figure, it comes out 55, nearly 56 minutes into this game now. But well-deserved, great perseverance on their part, and they're capitalizing on a couple of mistakes here and there by Tree. But look at Tree now. They're the ones using the Vile Rot once again. Going to try to get what happened to them earlier. But as you see on the mini-map, they are nowhere close to anyone on recent gaming. So that's probably not going to happen here. That's unfortunate for them. As far as recent gaming, they, they're kind of doing a similar thing, though. Yeah, I mean, in this game, like, you could theorycraft so much in terms of the team fighting, but honestly, in terms of when it gets into the late game, anything can happen. It is so random, and, and it doesn't really abide by any sort of logic or any kind of laws. 
because anything can happen put simply so I don't know if this really favours reason or tree but I don't know man I this is just going to be a close oh, game. Magic Kinesis. Kinesis, though. Yep, he's going to get caught right here. Magma stuns in. There's a follow-up from Behemoth. The sheep stick coming out. Kinesis is going to be locked down completely. And he's not as tanky as Cthulhu Fawn or Gemini. And so he falls buyback, pretty though. quickly. And he does have a buyback, as you pointed out. Yeah, that would be his final buyback. But still, it uh, <coughs> could come up here. Secondary tower even still up here in the middle. As <laughs> they are going to finish it off, most likely. But oh, yeah. No, but like, what, one big pickoff could be the difference between winning and losing the game. So it's just so it's so hard to really call uh, this stage of the game, honestly. But yeah, they're going to push it in though. Kinesis will definitely have to do buyback. It'll be his final buyback though, however. So here we go. When is the timing for trees? The question. Their their initiation not as strong as uh as recent gaming. That is for sure. They're going to try it right here. The trampoline puppet master. He's dropping fast. Again, he has that token alive, so it looks like he is going to fall right there. There's a Shockwave counter, though, and now Gemini taking some good lockdown damage once again. Up comes Puppet Master. Eruption comes out, but Gemini is going to be fine because Thilipon took the brunt of that. He does survive. Now, Plague was used, it look like, and clearly not doing the most, though, in the long run. A lot of balances, perhaps, and uh, it will get reason game to retreat, though, as far as everything going on there. So the buyback of Kinesis is enough. Uh, they did get the token used as well, so definitely positives, of course, there for Tree. And, okay, just look at the lead, man. 9,000 gold lead now for reason. It's, it's back and forth, man. It's just a roller coaster. I'm pretty sure Tree was up like 15,000 yeah, gold earlier. They were, and they're like nearly like 20, nearly 18,000 experience as well, so. But no, man. Late game, man. Anything can happen in the late game, but simply, there's, yeah. there's, 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 no, uh, there's no logic behind it. It's just crazy. Jeez. Chaos. This is, uh,. You know, going to be a great finish here leading into the Grand Finals, which once again, ladies and gentlemen, is coming up next here. Sync playing the winner of this series, the winner of this game more so. And right now, you know, we thought it was going to be Willow Keeper for a lot of this earlier game and the way they were playing and the lead that they had, but Reason Gaming is like, no, that is not going to happen. And uh, here they are with a solid lead themselves, but we are not going to call anything because uh, no. <laughs> it's what we learned, especially lately on the Han scene. It seems like there's a lot of these swing games here. One team has so much momentum, the other team builds it up to themselves and they take it over. So, and yeah, both teams definitely have very strong late game. But again, I think we kind of we're seeing as is, as it, we are hitting the stage that when it comes to initiation, honestly, reasons is just a lot stronger. Oh yeah, definitely because they've got, the AOE. they've got the AOE. They've got the AOE. Like Kafulafun isn't the same as like a Magma stun or like a Fisher stun, and and obviously Boxy's initiation is okay. But yeah, like you said, it's just the behavior of Magma. Those two as, as initiation combos is just godly put simply and even though you know regardless of how late it goes the combo can still be uh, very very devastating he's actually pick up a strong head though from near and honestly i dislike it because to me you only pick up strong head if you're going to use it in terms of you know you get your stuff off and then you use your strong head to make sure you're not affected by any magic control or damage like for puppet master it makes sense because obviously he wants to continue you know being effective and right clicking in the team fights but behemoth you jump in there you you, burn, you do your stuff blow your load kind of thing and then like what do you, what does the strong head really do for you after that mm -hmm. um, but but I just think maybe Resto or Spell Shards could be game-breaking, but picks up the Strunk Head instead. Yeah. Whew. This is, uh, this is crazy stuff, definitely. Coming out right here. So, a lot of, uh, understandably, a more passive play going to be coming out here for the next eh, three or four minutes, maybe, I think, before Congor should be back up. And that would be the third Congor now. Of course, that means it's good old bananas. You do see a sustainer picked up by Behemoth. So speaking of that restoration stone, that is coming. And actually, I want to say he's pretty damn close to getting in that in full. Oh, does he actually have enough? No, he's he's still he's still a little bit short. So, but uh, getting close, and I, I would assume he's gonna buy it before, rather than save for a buyback. That's one of those items where you, you just you get it when you can. You do not sit on that gold mm -hmm. restoration stone. So. Here comes the Valdrot once again. Willow Keeper this time. Can they actually get a jump here? There's no vision over here for them, so they're not exactly sure where they are. Reason must know. Oh, out, this is big because there's not everyone's here. Not everyone's here right now. Chipper kind of coming in. They're gonna get a jump, Magnus. Oh no, God. again with a disjoint. Here comes the trigger now from Behemoth. But no, he's not gonna jump. Instead, he's still at the portal key. He's gonna portal key away. They're still chasing. 
The nuke on to Magnus right there, throwing in the air. Here comes the mask control. Pops the shrunken head though. Couldn't mitigate any damage coming from the magic sense. They catch Gemini. Gemini pops his shrunken head though. He's putting in the right clicks, but Puppet Master's here. And he knows that shrunken head's not going to mitigate too much. So those are going to start wearing off now for either side. But it looks like now Tree's going to be the one retreating. But Gemini gets caught. Behemoth with a follow up shockwave. Nice job with the stasis smash. Mitigating that damage. Stop when he comes down. Mask control. There's the mask control. And down goes Magnus. Behemoth with a storage spin just a little bit too late. He comes down, taking some auto attacks. He finally gets away. The plague is passing around though. The plague against one. It make it another. Yes, it will. Gets Chipper. Puppet Master takes out Gemini though. Can Puppet Master live? No, he cannot. A hat trick for Root of Z actually on the plague runner. He gets a big play go off for the first time this game, it feels like. And it was a big time to do so. And now 62 minutes in, does Puppet have a buyback? He it does. looks like he does. Everyone basically does other than a Luna. As Magnus uses this right here. So they're going to kind of push in, but I don't think they're going to go much further. Yeah. Yeah, that's the right call to make. But they, Puppet buybacks in this game is so vital. He cannot be using it just to sort of defend against three heroes. Glacius might... Be in trouble, perhaps actually, but should be the biggest issue. It's only a glacius. A yeah, glacius <laughs> going to be found out now, but uh, he, distract, he will die. distract, place down a ward, <laughs> do something. Uh, he'll die, but that's not a big deal. But yeah, like that's actually good playing from reason because normally, like maybe the the instant natural reaction is like, okay, guys, they're pushing in, we got to buy back. But Gemini was dead. There was no real threat. Obviously, you know. Is, you know, the Hattie's buybacks on someone, but at least they're saving it on, on the Puppet Master. Uh, because Puppet Master buybacks is, is very, very useful. Yeah. Another crazy fight. You do see the overall lead, though, especially the gold uh, big stat that we're looking at. Again, kind of closing a little bit in favor of Tree, more so that Reason Game still has a lead, of course, but obviously a little bit less uh, than it was before. But, yeah, the buyback situation, you do like the Hellborn team maybe a little bit more, but there's that Resto Stun on and near, and that's a double Shockwave potential. And, I mean, you figure, again, Gemini, the only one with the Shrug and Ezra, so we're talking about, it's, that's that's potential to do a lot of freaking damage here. Exactly. exactly. Uh, now with the two of them, so. Um, I mean, going back to the, uh, the, I mean, we didn't really talk too much about it, but the Null Fire on Magma, so, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously it does, you know, uh, cleanse or dispel the, the Kinesis Stationers, but I just think, like, Sheepstick would be... 10 times better like I know they've got one one on chipper but why not make it two kind of thing like double its effectiveness like Gem if Gemini is still being useful or still uh, not, not being locked down for a fault to nothing then Sheepstick is still needed kind of thing and and particularly now he's got shrunk and head they have ways to initiate with the you know the Magma Sun and into Sheepstick for example but yeah. instead picks up the Nelfire but he might pick one up later to be fair but we'll have to see <laughs> ride my rocket is uh Competing against Kulo for uh, Game 3 of their best three loose bracket finals. Again, that's important, too, because the winner of that series will actually be Diamond next cycle uh, with Don, who we mentioned yesterday is in the grand finals already of gold. So, uh, I like the both those teams. They're, they're good fun. Uh, they're good fun. <laughs> I have no clues hey, on if, both, but I honestly, yeah, by the names alone, I, I hope that Ride My fine. Rocket wins. So. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> if Coolio go through, we'll see a lot of silhouette. There's, uh, Marcus Moy was one of my old teammates, and he's just like a dirty silhouette picker. So. Ah, yes. We've talked Marcus about one. him once or twice before. 36. Oh, God, a lot of gold being saved up here on the Legion side. Holy crap. I mean, I guess there's just as much on the health point side, to be fair. 4,000 on Magnus. You got 3,200 on Puppet. But, yeah, you look at the 3,000 plus on this Legion side, uh, including Cthulhu Fawn, and now it's 4,400 gold. He just sold something, I believe. So uh, he's, I, you know, Sheepstick, as usual at this point. And any point of the game, always very strong. So we'll see if he gets that. All right, here we go with Congor. No vision, spotted. Oh, in the way. Yeah, there's no vision. They don't have that poke vision either, like mm -hmm. uh, vision yeah. does. So they need to just kind of guess. I mean, it's a pretty good idea that that could be going. Oh on, yeah, so. it's obvious, but like they they can't initiate. That's that's the difference between having constant vision and knowing it's going on. Is that obviously they can rotate over, but unless they have like illusions like this or kind of good wards, it's going to be very hard for them to actually initiate into the the Congo. Yeah. Hit. Yeah, and again, this really does go back to you. You pointed out yesterday, Tree, uh, making the point. It's like it's the winter bracket final is extra important because not only is, the one yeah. of the advantage, but now you're, you're, you have to play another series before the grand finals in this case. And, you know, here we are. Go figure, as it usually does happen, a game three. And the game, third game is especially being, being well. a little bit longer. So, so, you know, it's – I mean, the default time of the grand finals is technically half an hour ago, so you're already going to be starting that late. So, yeah, it's got to be a, a draining – task as far as uh, you know even if you wait here and now you gotta go up against 
Sync Esports down one nothing after you just and played then, a crazy best of three. And then have like a five minute break and yeah, then go exactly. straight into it. So now these fun. are illusions here, by the way. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that one actually exposes the couple. You see, they, they come out, they're like, wait a second, what's going on? But they were spotted by the illusions there, so. I'm just going to fall back instead. Have to deal with it. But understandable that uh, being a third Congor. Oh, jeez. That was close. Deja vu used by a Luna right there. Glacius. <laughs> I bet the supports love this item for this reason, too. It allows heroes like Glacius to kind of be in the front lines and get a good award to sight down or rev for it, even if need be. With a little bit of safety. Both teams using this. They jump a Luna. Kinesis again. He wants this kill this time. Trample comes out. Aluna, there we go. They get the kill. But at what cost here? Mavis, a nice last one in the back. I'm chugging it popped by Puppet Master. Going for Kinesis. Kinesis doing a good kite job, though. Gemini sitting on Puppet Master. There's one shockwave. Shrugganets are up, though. Two shockwaves going to be coming. There's a second one. Puppet Hamath falling shortly after. The Shrugganet Gemini doing some work. Look at the mass control. The mass control hits. And down goes Chipper. And Puppet Master, though, he buys back. That is his final buyback. But did Tree just break through finally? They're going to push the middle tower. Everybody is up, and it's only Puppet Master and Magnus. Now, Magnus has an eruption, so this is definitely not over yet. I mean, they could definitely hold this with him and a Puppet Master. But Gemini at the same time, you just look, he's not too scared. He has 4,100 life. He's good to go. Pounding away at the melee reaction. They're going to give it up, so they just choose. It's not worth it. Yeah, but I mean, um, they're most likely going to lose two here as well. I believe them and Chipper are down for 45 seconds, and three are going to back Congo, off. I'm guessing. Oh, Congo, yes, sorry. Yeah. I, I thought that was down. Yeah, yeah, that's this probably the safe play to make. Get one Rex back off. Obviously, Behemoth is still down as well as Chipper for another 30 minutes. So, um, I, I wonder if they're going to give it on to, to Gemini and him to sell his boots. I wonder if that's going to be what they're yeah. going to do or not. I know you've brought uh, that hit, up before, yeah. It, I mean, I, I, honestly, I don't, I, don't, I don't think we see it enough, but I think it's a very, very good strategy, uh, particularly in the late game, because the hero is, is so fast anyway without boots, but they're going to give it to, to um, Kefilifin anyway. I mean, Gemini is so damn tanky anyway, so he pretty much died, but um, still. No, you're right. You mentioned it yesterday. Again, it's uh, you get, what, the it's, 60 moves yeah. from the boots, so you take that exactly. off. Exactly. Yeah, well, like 49 or yeah, 409 yeah. or 410, that's still really damn Plus, good. Plus the agility from Gunjuro, plus the active from Gunjuro. Yeah. Um, I just think it makes the most amount of sense, but I never ever see it. I mean, the one alternative um, would be post haste, but he doesn't have that either. So, like, I, I could I could agree with someone who says no, no, you should buy post haste instead of Gunjuro, and then I'd agree with him there. But having steam boots to me it makes is there's no benefit at all. But, well, he is sitting on nearly seven thousand gold now, yeah, so clearly going to be buying something now. big here. Oh. He saw boots. Yay! Assassin show. There you go. Kinjiro, yep. That's what you're talking about. So, again, he's still moving 408 moves speed with no boots. That's obviously exactly. very good. Plus, he has the uh, the, the active from Kinjiro, which is plus 25%, which is about, yep. like, 480 for weight, for anyway. Yeah, for yeah it'll weight. be up there. It'll be near haste, basically, is the point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He activates that, of course, those two charges. So, yeah, it makes sense. And, yeah, just as you're saying that, go figure, he does Got to rely on battles. Like, I've never, I've barely <laughs> ever seen Gemini's players do it. Mean, maybe because we haven't seen a game go this late with Gemini, but still, I, I barely ever see it. But, yeah. got to rely on battles on, man. It's full, full throw. Yeah, you look at Magnus, by the way. He actually ended up selling the Null Fire Blade. <laughs> He's like, wait, why did uh, I did get it, this again? It, exactly. Like, I'm pretty uh, sure I looked like, at it, too, and it still had eight charges, like, ten minutes later. Yeah. It's not, I, I didn't really. I mean, Demonic is fine as well, but I think Sheepstick, particularly now, like, Gemini needs controlling. Um, like, you, you see, like, Behemoth would jump in, but he doesn't have a big impact in terms of the shockwave because the the only one who's up in front of the team fights is Gemini, but he's got a shrunken head. If they have a Sheepstick and a double Behemoth, then, you know, then he might start dropping, for example, if Puppet's hitting on him as well. But they need ways of stopping the, the shrunken head from Gemini. Because although it's only what is it five seconds now, it is a big, a big difference regardless. Mm -hmm. Magmus scouting out on the front lines. Uh, <laughs> go figure there. Only six games have gone over seventy minutes. I mean, it, only lightly. It's honestly a lot that have gone over seventy minutes. But uh, apparently, a couple of them having a Gemini, and he lost both of those games. And, that is definitely, obviously, a lot of circumstances that's coming into play there. But. Yeah, exactly. To me, that's surprising because I think yeah. Gemini is ugly one of the best. Uh, particularly in this game, he's, he's going to be carrying a lot harder than Puppet Master for about three reasons. Firstly, he's got higher farm, um, so he's got more better items. Secondly, Puppet Master is more of like a bursty sort of carry, not the best you know, right clicker. And thirdly, Gemini can obviously afford not to go boots because he, 
he has the, the passive movement speed, whereas Puppet Master, he always needs to have boots, so he can only have five decent late game items. Uh, one of them always has to be post haste or steam boots. Oh, Kinesis, Kinesis my... Yeah. Oh my god. They must have heard that portal key sound without a doubt. Yeah, he comes yeah, to the He's like, screw this, I'm just gonna go. Pops the shrunken head, Stasis smash out of Behemoth. They want to jump first, they do. Sheep stick, Behemoth getting burst in. Behemoth dead, no ultimate's gonna be coming around. Magnus in the background, Pick Eruption coming out. Plague Runner again, no Plague going off. He gets picked out, so two big ultimates on either side. Not being used by Magnus now, he's in trouble. And he is eventually gonna get caught by Gemini. He goes down, Puppet Master thrown up in the air with the Stasis smash. Comes down, but now he's in trouble as well. Yep, burst is real with the auto attacks. He's staying dead, and Tree might have just absolutely done it right here with the push. I think they're gonna take game number three and ultimately move on to the grand finals to face Sink Esports. What a fight yep. it was, but wow. there we go. GG, well played. Game three and the series goes to Willowkeeper. And they're going to be taking on Sync Esports. Recent gaming will finish third place here in cycle number six. Still a respectable finish without a doubt. Obviously, they were gold before that. And uh, definitely Reason could have easily took that game as well. But just wasn't to be. A uh, great initiation, honestly, come out from, from, uh, from Boxy and Crack as well. Instantly burst down near, made sure he had no impact in the game. And, and when Gemini, he actually got jumped on by the, the Magnus and the Chipper. But a great Somerset from, uh, I think it's 